Hi, I'm Brian Greenstone, the president of Pangea Software. In the last three episodes of our Behind the Scenes series, I showed you our number one selling game called Enigma, our favorite game of all time, Automatic, and the very first original iPhone game that we ever did, Beer Bounce. In this episode, I'm going to talk about our game, Billy Frontier. Billy Frontier is essentially a space cowboy arcade game. There are four different types of gameplay and two different scenarios for each, uh, the Old West Town and the Swamp. One of the gameplay modes is the shootout mode, which is basically a first-person shooter mode where you have to go through either the town or the swamp while blasting the bad guys and collecting more ammo. Another mode is the stampede mode, and it's pretty hilarious. Here, you're being chased by a herd of stampeding kanga cows. They're half kangaroo, half cow. The goal is to beat them to the finish line without being trampled to death. You collect chili peppers, which give you a boost of speed, and you can jump over obstacles that get in the way. This mode is the dual mode, and it's all about reflexes. At the bottom of the screen, a random pattern appears, and you have to tap out that pattern as quickly as you can. Each time you complete a pattern, a progress light lights up, and a new pattern appears. If you can get all of the red progress lights lit by the end of the song, then you'll win the duel. But if you don't, then you'll be shot, sometimes multiple times. The simplest mode in Billy Frontier is actually my favorite one. It's called the Shooting Gallery, and all you have to do is blast stuff out of the sky. You blast ammo crates to get more ammo, time crates to get more time, and so on. Shooting whiskey bottles makes you drunk for a few seconds, which makes it hard to aim, and shooting kanga cows and aliens is just plain fun. It's very simple but gratifying, especially when you shoot a kanga cow just right, so the blood spray goes everywhere. Billy Frontier was inspired by the classic Sergio Leone, Clint Eastwood, Spaghetti Westerns. Movies like The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, Fistful of Dollars, For a Few Dollars More, and so on. And Scott Harper originally designed the game, and he's the same artist who we worked with on Nanosaur 2, Beer Bounce, Bugdom, and so on. And we were both huge fans of these old, classic, mythic westerns, so we really wanted to do a game that would pay homage to all that made those films great. So, the duel sequences in the game were inspired by the final duel scene in The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, and the overall look and sound of Billy Frontier tries to follow that same Sergio Leone feel. The art and animation in Billy Frontier is absolutely first-rate for an iPhone app, but for me, the crowning glory of this game was the music. For Billy Frontier's soundtrack, I once again turned to Alexander Dmitrijevic, who also worked on Automatic, Nanosaur 2, and so on. And even though Alex is in Norway, he knew these movies as well as we did, and he really understood the Ennio Morricone style of music. Ennio Morricone is the composer who did the music for all the Sergio Leone films, and it's his theme song for The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly that everyone identifies with this film genre. Everyone recognizes this. Like most of our other iPhone games, Billy Frontier was originally written for the Mac, and it only took about two weeks to port over to the iPhone, but it was really a very challenging game to port because Billy Frontier was one of our later Mac games, and this meant that the polygon counts in our 3D models were actually pretty high, much higher than what the iPhone could handle. So, as always, we had to get the old models out and start reducing them. The great thing about the iPhone is that you can do pretty severe polygon reduction without it being noticeable in the game, because the iPhone screen is so small and high res. Some of our games actually look better on the iPhone screen than they did in the original versions on a full-sized monitor. We had to reduce the number of objects in the game's terrain as well. We cut back on the number of headstones, bushes, kanga cows, and so on, pretty much everywhere we could, and our reduction efforts paid off. The game runs great, looks great, and sounds great. 
Billy Frontier is another example of how sometimes a game that was considered mediocre on one platform can be great on another platform. Honestly, I never considered Billy Frontier to be one of our best Mac games, but it works so well as an iPhone game that I do consider it one of the best for that platform. The same thing happened with our other game Enigma. I mean, Pangea Software's forte was doing large action-adventure games that took us most of a year to develop, and Enigma was just a little puzzle game, so I never thought much of it. But it ends up that Enigma, like Billy Frontier, makes a great iPhone game because it's such a perfect match for the platform. I really like Billy Frontier. The great gameplay, the great graphics and music, they all work together to create one of the highest quality games on the App Store. So I hope you'll go to iTunes and check it out. Now, in the next episode of this series, I'm not going to showcase any particular game. Instead, I'll be talking about iPhone game development in general and giving you some tips on how to succeed as an iPhone developer and publisher.